For the past 25 years, the Subaru Outback has been one of the company's best-selling models. In fact, one in five new Subarus sold in America is actually an Outback. And for 2022, the Outback gets even more capable because this right here is the 2022 Outback Wilderness, a special off-road oriented version of this wagon, which has a raised suspension, special all-terrain tires, a redesigned suspension as well, and unique styling front and rear. So today I'm here in Monticello, New York to drive the new Outback out on the road and on this special off-road course. And the big question I want to answer, if you guys are looking for an even more off-road capable version of this car, just how wilderness is the new wilderness? That's what we're here to find out. So what makes the Outback Wilderness stand out on the outside? Well, Subaru has made some nice changes to help distinguish it from other Outback models. As you can see, I want you to notice this geyser blue exterior. This is unique, of course, to the Wilderness model. It's kind of like a combination of the Wilderness green and World Rally blue. It's a really nice color combination. The front end of this car is instantly recognizable as something unique. You can see all of the chrome or silver bits have been blacked out on the Wilderness model. The grille has also been enlarged with these hexagonal shapes on the insert. You again have the front camera system that is taken from the Touring. You have these copper trim pieces here that show important touch points on the vehicle. These are, of course, where the front recovery tow hooks are. You have unique bumpers uh, that give you a little bit more cladding. This gives you a little bit more protection when you're off-roading. Unique fog lights, of course. These are LEDs with a hexagonal shape, and you also have their LED headlights, which are the um, give you the LED daytime running light, but no LED turn signals. And you also have this interesting little hood graphic here, which does help to reduce glare when the sun is shining really hard and doesn't reflect back in your face. And Subaru says that the Wilderness model is a tad wider. It's mostly wider because of the fender flares. They gave you unique fender flares, more Wilderness badging, and of course, these tires. These are a 17 inch wheel. They're an inch smaller than the other Outback models. They're riding on 225 Geo Lander Yokohama tires, which again, give you a nice um, compromise between off-road capability and um, on-road comfort. The suspension, like I said earlier, has been raised to nine and a half inches for ground clearance. And you also have a front skid plate under there as standard. My tester has all of the dealer accessory skid, skid plates for an extra 600 bucks, which is nice. And you can see around the side profile, this is still a 191 inch long wheelbase or overall length. And the roof rails you can see on this vehicle are also slightly unique. These are, are ladder type roof rails, which hold a little bit more weight. These hold a total of 220 pounds dynamically, and you can also put a tent on the roof. It'll hold a maximum of 700 pounds static weight, which means when it's at a standstill, um, which is about double the weight capacity of the regular Outback, uh, which has a slightly different roof rail system. So that's, of course, something that owners have been asking for. It gives you that ability to put the tent on the roof if you guys go camping. Here at the rear, you can see the taillights are a little bit darkened. More of that chrome trim is gone. More copper accents, blacked out badging, of course, uh, along with the blacked out window trim. And then if you open up the cargo area for this vehicle, that hasn't changed. You still get around uh, 32 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold down the second row seats and you get uh, 75 cubic feet of space. What they did add, however, is this rubberized area on the seat back, which resists scuffing and is easier to clean. And the headliner, you can see, is now black as opposed to gray, which gives you a little bit more durability if you guys put a mountain bike back here. And one new feature that's a new part is this LED rear cargo light. Subaru added this, of course, because owners were asking for something like that if they're putting stuff into the vehicle at night after they've been done, you know, going out on the trails or going out hiking or whatever the Subaru owners like to do with their vehicles. Now on the inside of the Outback Wilderness, Subaru also made some changes into this vehicle to kind of differentiate it, make it a little bit more special. A lot of the copper trim that you saw from the exterior is kind of carried over. And you also have these unique StarTex gray, a dark gray, uh, leatherette material that does, again, uh, resist water, and they are so, also are a heated seat. The driver's seat that I'm sitting in uh, is an eight-way power with a two-person memory, or with a, a two-person lumbar, or with a two-way lumbar support, but no memory seat. So kind of keep that in mind. If you guys want the memory seats, you need to go for the touring model, and that's the only way you're gonna get cooled seats. But looking at the interior, you can see it is still a very nice place to spend time. It's very comfortable. It's very roomy. It's very car-like. It's very spacious. Again, here are the seats with the Subaru Wilderness badge embossed into the actual headrest. The headrest still kind of adjusts that way. You have that same hexagonal pattern in the actual seat fabric, which is nice. And you have more of that copper stitching. I really like the seats. They're comfortable, supportive, they're durable, and you get those um, rubber mats as Snader along with the touch points here in the copper trim on the shifter and on the steering wheel. And you also get these alloy pedals down here, which is a nice addition. When I shut the door, the door still has a nice solid sounding thunk. The horn 
also sounds very meaty. It sounds very aggressive. The button to fire up the engine is back here on the usual place. And you can see when you start up the Wilderness version, the gauges have a unique copper ring. There's slightly different graphics. The head unit is also unique to the Wilderness because if you go into like um, the car icon here, you're gonna see um, something like the uh, the actual vehicle here in uh, which is the Outback Wilderness. It's a unique head unit that Subaru says that shows you uh, some different graphics and whatnot. So of course, that's all very nice to have. The X mode, as you can see here, has its dual mode function. Uh, where it allows you to go into a deep snow mode uh, and a mud mode, which is nice. And then the materials in here are all pretty much the same, soft touch injection molded plastic, a nice um, padded area right here with some stitching on the actual dash. This feels like the same StarTex material on the dashboard, which is nice. Same soft padding on the door panels, some you know carbon fiber look trim over here. There's again, wilderness badges uh, all over the interior. The windows are one touch, power for all four, which is nice. You have. The same steering wheel, of course, in other Outbacks, but you get some copper stitching and copper trim. It's a tilt telescoping wheel, uh, which is again, very nice. Although no heated wheel, Subaru does not offer that on the Wilderness. Um, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there's the backup camera. It's a pretty good, um, re relatively clear resolution, although it doesn't offer um, some of the high-tech features. And I also, I'm still annoyed that it doesn't take up the entire screen. When I put it into drive, there is the front view 180 degree camera that they took from the touring model. So I'm glad to see Subaru included that, but still no 360 camera. If you guys are looking for that feature, it's not available. My tester has the navigation option. So you have the Subaru embedded TomTom Tom GPS, uh, which is okay. Most of you are gonna use the CarPlay or Android Auto, which is not wireless, but you can see they did update it where it takes up the entire screen before it was kind of cutting off and there was a useless uh, wasted space down here. This is now very nice if you're gonna pull up the map GPS system. It's all very good. It's still not the best. It's, it's somewhat snappy, but I think Subaru needs to, again, beef up the software on this vehicle to make it a little bit faster. I'm still not liking uh, how slow it is at times. Uh, down here, you can see your climate control is included, of course. Um, can basically access your climate control from the screen. There's some, some hard buttons, of course, as well, um, which helps with making this vehicle a little bit easier to use if you guys prefer the hard buttons. There is no wireless phone charger on this model. There is a dealer accessory for it if you'd like it. Um, the shifter is, controls the CVT. There's the button here, of course, to turn on the, crew, the camera on the front. Padded armrest here with two levels of storage, which is, of course, very nice. And then above me, you can see the lighting is LED over here, which is good. Uh, the sunroof, which is optional, um, which is nice. And then the glove compartment you can see here is a bin style. It's damped uh, and lined with felt. So overall, the cabin hasn't really changed too much. Uh, still missing the Harman Kardon stereo. I don't like the six speaker stereo in this car. I think it sounds rather mediocre. Um, so I wish that Subaru, I hope Subaru will add that option in the future for this trim. You have to go to a limited or touring to get the premium sound now. Backseat space is also pretty comparable to other Outback models, around 39 inches of legroom back here, the same StarTex material. Uh, the seats, they fold down in a 60-40 manner, same copper stitching. You have two USB ports, uh, two, uh, heated rear seats, which is unexpected, rear seat air vents, map pockets, and overall, it's still a very comfortable place to spend time in case you guys need to actually put people back there. So underneath the hood of the Wilderness model, this is the same thing that you'll find underneath the hood of other Outback XT models. This is the company's 2.4 liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder. It's a boxer flat four, of course. That's what Subarus are known for. And it still makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque paired with a linear tronic high torque CVT that has reduced uh, or lower final drive ratios that it should improve acceleration, improve the torque multiplication. Because of that, the fuel economy has dropped slightly to 22 in the city, 26 on the highway on regular gas. Um, still very impressive numbers for the segment and the wilderness model doesn't weigh anymore. It weighs in at just under uh, 3,900 pounds. It'll still tow a maximum of around 3,500 pounds. So still very, very impressive in terms of capability. Uh, and it should also make it a quicker outback because of that a lower final drive ratio in the transmission. All right, so I'm here in New York with the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. I'm actually heading to Monticello Motor uh, Raceway because there's an off-road course that Subaru has set up there where we can actually take the Outback Wilderness off-roading. But before that, I've got to drive about 30 miles to actually get to the raceway. Uh, so we'll go ahead and knock out the driving portion of the Outback Wilderness because Subaru was adamant about keeping this car's on-road capability 
just as functional as any other Outback. So we've got, you know, an upper, a raised suspension where they've adjusted the suspension tuning for off-roading. They've also improved this is the transmission. It's got a lower final drive ratio now, so that's going to improve the torque multiplication. We have the standard 2.4 liter turbo engine that delivers 260 horsepower. This is all good stuff that we find in the regular Outback. So first thing I would like to test out is a zero to 60 acceleration in this car. And to do that, we'll come to a stop here. We'll put it into its... There is no sport mode essentially for this car, but I will brake torque it slightly. All right, we'll try our first run. Wow. Our first run, we got 5.85 seconds. 5.85 seconds is quick. Subaru really did improve the, the final drive ratio in this car. They lowered it um, and it improves the torque off the line. I do notice the car feels noticeably punchier than the, the Outback Touring that I had. And that's very impressive. Um, this is a second faster than the Subaru Ascent, which has the same powertrain. Remember, 260 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque. Those are strong numbers. And the vehicle doesn't weigh any more than the regular uh, Outback. It weighs in at just under 3,900 pounds. The wheels and tires are the same. They're the same 225 width. So there's a lot uh, to like here in terms of acceleration. This is quicker than the RAV4 TRD. This is quicker than a Jeep Cherokee. Um, quicker than a Toyota 4Runner, obviously. This is one of the quickest, you know, off-road oriented SUVs. It's a wagon, really, that you can buy. Uh, and that is very ex impressive acceleration numbers. Now, acceleration numbers are always great, but that's not the point when you buy a vehicle like this. But I'm really happy to see that the Outback did pretty well in my zero to 60 tests. Now, the real test, of course, is drivability on the road. And this is where Subaru worked hard for the wilderness model to keep this vehicle still a very on-road friendly uh, family car. And, you know, even though I'm sitting up higher, I've got nine and a half inches of ground clearance, which is insane because a Toyota 4Runner has 9.6 inches of ground clearance. A Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, a G-Class has nine and a half inches. Uh, a Jeep Wrangler, a base model is like 9.9 .9 inches. So the ground clearance in this vehicle is very, very capable. It, it's a lot more than I expected Subaru to do. I didn't expect it to be in the same company as other vehicles like that. But the whole point of buying something that's factory tuned, that's off-road lift, that's lifted like this is you preserve the drivability. So the Subaru EyeSight system has been recalibrated. So it still works just as you'd expect. It's got the lane keep assist, the adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Uh, it's got the blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. Um, that is part, the rear cross traffic braking is part of a, a package that my tester has that rolls in the GPS, the sunroof. Um, although I really am sad that you can't get the Harman Kardon premium sound in this car, but I mean, in terms of drivability, you obviously sit up high, you feel like you're driving an SUV, even though this is still a wagon. I look at the side profile and I think I'm driving a wagon, but it also still drives like a car, just like the regular Outback. It's very smooth riding. The suspension actually is a little bit softer out on you know paved roads, which is nice. And then you also have those tires, which have a little bit more sidewall protection. Uh, and these Yokohama Geolander tires are a really nice middle ground because they still, they give you a little bit more durability when you're off-roading, but they also preserve the on-road drivability. So they're not noisy. You don't hear too much in terms of like a tire drumming noise that you find with other vehicles. But what I am hearing more of is wind noise. They use a ladder type roof rail system on the wilderness model. And this is of course to uh, give you more cap capacity up on the roof when you're planning on putting stuff there. And I do hear a slightly more wind noise than uh, the Outback that I had for a couple months last year, or for a few months last year. But once you kind of get past that road rut noise, and this is at 70 miles an hour, it is still not like bad. I mean, if you guys are used to driving a Jeep Wrangler, this is going to still be very quiet, very refined, very car-like. You can still daily drive this vehicle. And just like every other Subaru, you have awesome visibility. The visibility in here is great. Very thin pillars, good sized side mirrors. The seats are also comfortable. I love the StarTex material, even though they don't offer the cooled seat in this model. I'm okay with that because this StarTex actually kind of um, reflects sunlight and it tries to stay a little bit cooler on its own and it's also water repellent. Um, and in terms of everything else in this interior, you still have the 11.6 inch display, which now Subaru has, of course, updated the CarPlay to where it takes up the entire screen, which is definitely nice. I like how it takes up the entire screen now, especially if you pull up, you know, Waze, for example, it's the entire, uh, almost the entire screen. 
or if you go back to the factory nav, that's where it's gonna give you an even bigger screen. But uh, overall, it's still everything that you like about an Outback out on the road, just more comfortable, slightly quicker acceleration, good ride quality, comfortable seats, and it has most of the features that I like, except in the touring model, you are still missing, of course, the driver focus feature, the Harman Kardon stereo, the cooled seats, the heated wheel. You don't get any of those features um, and the heated back seats, but I think Subaru has thrown in a lot. And this is going to appeal to a lot of buyers. It's going to obviously appeal to their core buyers, but it's gonna, Subaru thinks this is going to attract buyers who would otherwise look at a Jeep Cherokee, a Toyota 4Runner. Um, so they want something a little bit more car-like, a little bit more fuel efficient. Uh, and this is very impressive out on the road, but we're heading over to Monticello Motor Raceway. Uh, I wanna see what this wilderness model can do off-road because that's the whole point of this model, right? So let's queue over to the off-road scene and see what the wilderness can do. So one of the cool new features with the wilderness model is when you take this vehicle off-roading, there is a new dual mode X mode system, which we technically saw on the Onyx XT. However, Subaru has made a couple of software changes to the dual mode X mode system, which now lets you drive around this deep snow and mud mode at speeds over 25 miles an hour. Now they've set up this off-road course here in Monticello, which is probably way more technical than what owners are actually going to do. But Subaru wants to really show off the capabilities of this vehicle. Now, my tester that I'm driving has the dealer accessory full underbody skid plates. For around 600 bucks, it basically will protect the entire undercarriage of this car. You get a front skid plate as standard, but this includes the ones for the transmission, the uh, drivetrain, the differential, all that other stuff that you really want in something like this. So let's go ahead and head off-roading into, or in the Outback Wilderness and I actually really enjoyed the Outback Touring that I had, the XT Touring that I had for a few months last year. It was a surprisingly capable vehicle that just needed some better tires, some skid plates, and more ground clearance. And that's essentially what the Wilderness model is giving you. It's giving you all that. And as you guys saw out on the road, it preserves the off-road or the road driving capabilities of this vehicle. Now, of course, I know probably a lot of you are probably looking at the terrain here and thinking, oh, my Honda Civic could do that as well. Sure, maybe, but you wouldn't be as comfortable and you wouldn't feel as confident as you are in this vehicle. And I'm pretty impressed, honestly, with how well the car rides. I'm, honest, I'm automatically noticing the retuned suspension in this car. The extra ground clearance, which is the same as a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, is really, really nice to have out here because you don't have to worry about dragging the underbelly on the rough stuff. <laughs> And of course, with that lower final drive ratio, it allows for increased torque multiplication and they've added a, a cooler to the transmission. So they're trying to keep it from overheating when you actually need the wheels to slip, which is a problem with Subarus with their CVTs. This model, however, shouldn't have that problem anymore. So Subaru really listened to a lot of what their owners had to, to say because they found that about 30% of Outback owners actually do take their vehicles off-roading. So, Coming around these tighter areas here, this is where you're really going to appreciate the smaller size of the Outback. It's not like this big, fat, wide, you know, Jeep Wrangler or something, or a Toyota 4Runner. The Outback is narrower than a lot of those SUVs. And you really feel it out here. Haven't really scraped the undercarriage yet in this thing. Of course, the redesigned bumpers also give you a little bit better break over and approach and departure angles. And there's a lot more cladding to keep from scratching up your paintwork because that's always a concern when you're taking your vehicle off-roading. I've been driving around with the dual mode X mode in deep snow and mud right now for this test. Subaru told me to leave it in that setting, which also does include downhill assist control, where if you go down a steep grade, it's kind of like an off-road cruise control. It'll apply the brakes. And when you're going uphill like this, you really feel that increased torque multiplication. The throttle is a little bit soft and touchy though. I have to kind of modulate it. There we go. It's sending the power to the wheel with the most grip. These, these Yokohama G-Lander tires are really excellent out in these conditions. I like this a lot. But because Subaru now allows you to leave it in this mode above 25 miles an hour, they're expecting more owners to do kind of like a higher speed gravel uh, test of some sort in it. Ooh. 
And of course, here's like a little bit of a mud pit that we have to go through, which will get the car really dirty. Uh, and I guess I'm gonna go straight through here. I don't wanna get this guy all wet. <laughs> Okay, it seemed a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Alright, so now we're coming up to a rather steep hill that I'm going to drive down. This is where we can really test out the hill descent control in this vehicle. And of course, off-road driving on camera never looks quite as scary as it does in the video as it, as it is in person. Wow, this is really steep. <laughs> okay. That front camera really helps with visibility here. And then I'm good to go? Yep. Okay. All right, so that front camera is really showing me what's there. And you can see the, the car's actually modulating the brakes on its own for me. I don't have to hit the brakes really. <laughs> this is uh, pretty impressive. This is stuff that I would go through in a Jeep easily, but in a Subaru, not always the case. But hey, that is pretty cool. The car made it look so easy, and I really love that front camera system on this car. Subaru still doesn't offer a full 360 camera, but the front camera, as you can see, provides a nice helping view whenever you're, you're in tough situations like this, or if you're just trying to park this car in your tight garage. All right, we're gonna go to the left here and see how it gets up this. A little bit more mud on the ground again. I mean, the ground clearance on this car is amazing. I haven't scraped the undercarriage yet. In it, which is impressive. But if I do scrape the undercarriage, I will have some peace of mind knowing that there are skid plates under there. So I think Subaru should have made them standard, but if you have to spend another 600 bucks at the dealership, I think it's worth the charge. All right, we're going down this hill again. It really does look a lot more steep in person versus on video. Yeah, it's modulating the brakes. My foot is completely off the brake right now. That's really nice. <laughs> now, how many Subaru owners are actually going to be doing this off-road? I'm not sure, but it's nice to know that Subaru has built this car to handle way more than what owners may throw at it. And I've just kind of been enjoying the drive. This is an unexpected surprise with how capable off-road the Outback Wilderness actually is. All right, I guess I'm actually going through the river. This will really test out the water fording capability. I'm really skeptical that they want me to go through the river. Oh God, okay. They actually want me to go through this river, okay. Oh boy. Well, looks like I got stuck. <laughs> this seems like it's too deep. You really want me to go through this river? Oh my God. They really want me to go through this river. Okay. Oh my God, I'm actually driving through a frickin' river right now. Oh, I'm like waiting for water to come in through here. But where do I get out? Where do I get out of the river? I have to fit through there? Um, I guess. God, this is really scary. Oh my God. Oh, really happy that this car is super narrow because that is something that a Jeep would not fit through. Holy shit, this is scary. Subaru was not kidding when they wanted to show off the off-road capability of this wagon. Holy shit. I just drove through a river that I was sure that the car was going to drown, and it didn't. All right. <laughs> well, color me impressed. 
Very, very impressive. Uh oh. All right, come on. Can you do it, Subaru? Come on, sort the power. There we go. Ah, oh. ha ha. Ha ha ha. Yes. So clearly Subaru designed the Outback Wilderness to be a lot more capable than it needs to be for the average Outback buyer. And after spending the day driving this thing out on the road on an off-road course, I actually drove it through a stream, through water that I thought honestly was going to get it flooded. I'm coming away very impressed with this car because as much as I like the regular Outback, the Wilderness model takes it to the next level in terms of capability. It has a unique styling on the outside that I is sl slowly growing on me. I really like it in this geyser blue. I like the black wheels and tires. I like the interior accent to super added with the uh, copper accents, of course, the StarTex uh, soft text material, the fake leather material. And I think the off-road capabilities, the nine and a half inches of ground clearance, the uh, skid plates, the turbo engine, which is a lot quicker than I thought this vehicle would actually be because of that you know, lower final drive ratio. This actually makes it the quickest accelerating Outback in the Outback family. And really, if you guys are looking for the ultimate Outback, this is essentially it. However, just be sure you're okay by not having some of the features from the Touring. Like you can't get the heated seats, you can't get the Harman Kardon stereo, uh, you cannot get the uh, focus driver focus feature where it monitors you in case you're falling asleep. Those are features that I would like to see Subaru make available, but I can also see where they're kind of positioning the wilderness model. I suspect a lot of owners or buyers who look at this model don't necessarily need all that tech, but I think the Harman Kardon stereo is one piece of the tech that they should have threw in in this vehicle, especially at the price point. Now, speaking of which, the price of this vehicle starts at $36,995. It's about uh, $1,800 more than the Onyx XT, which is a really good deal considering what you get here. My tester, of course, has the um, sunroof, the navigation package, and the reverse automatic braking. I don't have final pricing on that option package, but I'm going to guess around $1,800. So all in, this one here would probably be right around $40,000, which makes it a really good deal, especially if you're going to compare it to something like a Jeep Cherokee, a Toyota 4Runner, a Honda Passport, for example. They're all going to be right around the same price, but this offers a much more car-like driving experience with the off-road capability. It offers one of the strongest accelerations you're going to find in this segment. And once you get past the fact that you're driving a wagon, which I think is actually a good thing, remember this is a wagon, even though Subaru likes to call it a crossover, this is definitely one of the more unique entries. And I have no doubt that Subaru owners and new Subaru people are going to be lining up to get this vehicle when it does go on sale later this summer. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.